All right, so I got an absolutely amazing clip here for you guys that is kind of just exposing the hollowness of this anti-woke movement that we have seen prop up over the last couple of years on the right. So as pointed out by our boys at the Vanguard podcast, we have a clip here with Bethany Mandel and Brianna Joy Gray of The Hills Rising, where she is going to just basically ask a simple question about how exactly this person who just, by the way, wrote an entire book book on anti-wokeness, okay? It's called Stolen Youth, How Radicals Are Erasing Innocence and Indoctrinating a Generation. Okay, she wrote a book on this specific topic. Let's go ahead and see how she defines wokeness in her view. And Americans consider themselves very liberal and probably fewer of them consider themselves to be woke. And so, you know, when, when well, we talk about traditional... What does that mean to you? Right, could, could, would you mind defining woke? Because it's come up a couple times and I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So... I mean, woke is sort of the idea that um, I, this is going to be one of those moments that goes viral. I mean, woke is something that's very hard to define, and we've spent an entire chapter defining it. It is sort of the understanding that we need to re -to totally reimagine and re re redo society in order to create hierarchies of oppression. Um, Sorry, I, it's, it's hard to explain in a 15 second soundbite. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit hard to explain because it's just inherently being used as this nebulous, amorphous term that conservatives use against literally anything that they disagree with. I mean, I've heard conservatives talk about addressing climate change as being woke, talking about providing universal health care to people as woke. The $15 minimum wage, that's woke, and it can go all the way from those types of policy measures to materially improve people's lives to things like cancel culture, whatever that means, you know, a comedian getting pushback for some edgy joke that they made, right? It means literally everything. This is the all-encompassing boogeyman for the right now. And, you know, listen, at the beginning of this clip, right, she's trying to define this. She's clearly struggling with it. And, um, you know, she gives this take here, basically, where she's saying that, um, you know, this is about reimagining society, right? Wokeness means reimagining or redoing society in order to create hierarchies of oppression. Okay, listen, I mean, you could give a number of different definitions for what the word woke means, tons of different people use it in tons of different circumstances to mean completely different things. But if you're going by like a steel manned definition of previous, you know, uh, responses from one that we're going to get to here in a second of uh, none other than Ron DeSantis and his administration, how they define it, right? If you want to give a steel manned interpretation of what they're actually talking about here, then it's not that difficult to define. And it's definitely not the left trying to establish hierarchies of oppression, whatever that means. I mean, what this reminded me of is like that classic conservatives taking that MLK quote out of context where MLK says, you know, I want to live in a society where people are judged by the content of their character instead of by the color of their skin. They'll take that out of the context where MLK was actually talking about the need for systemic fixes to systemic institutional problems within the United States to actually address some of these inequalities that we have baked in within our country. They remove it from that context of what he was actually calling for there and basically just pretend as if he means if we all close our eyes, pretend that we don't see race and you don't like personally call, you know, black people the N-word, then racism solved. We can just move on as a society. There's no need to address any of these systemic issues. So that's what that reminded me of is them taking that quote out of context, because if you actually look at what, for example, the Ron DeSantis administration, you know, has uh, termed the, uh, the, the word woke to actually mean in legal filings, okay? Here's how they define it. So here from OK Player, they say one of the biggest critics of woke was forced to define what the word actually means. Here's what was said. So this is basically what I think would be a steel manned position of what the right is actually talking about when they say the word woke. OK, so they say. We've heard the word so much over the years, especially from conservatives and right-wing figures, but what is the definition? What does woke mean? One of the most prominent critics of woke culture, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, had his lawyers provide a definition. The answer was quite telling. Okay, so during this trial that Ron DeSantis administration representatives, okay, one of these attorneys was uh, uh, participating in, okay, this is how they defined it. They say the term woke means basically that there is a belief that there are systemic injustices in American society and in 
need to address them. They also added that Newman says that DeSantis does not believe that there are systemic injustices in the United States. Okay, so that's really the main position. That is the underlying position of their anti-woke campaign. They are basically trying to pretend as if systemic inequalities within the United States have been 100% resolved at a fundamental level, and so there is no need to create policies or, you know, push an agenda in order to try to level the playing field any further because we left that all back in the 1960s after the civil rights movement, right? That's what they want to pretend is actually going on here, completely ignoring, you know, the actual statistical inequalities between different groups of Americans, right? Whether it's the black-white racial wealth gap, there's only a couple different ways that you could explain that wealth gap. You could do it by doing a, you know, structural analysis of some of the policies throughout history, the legacy of chattel slavery, the Jim Crow laws, and all of that stuff, and come to the conclusion that we have had, you know, systemic underinvestment or outright oppression against specific groups of people, and so we need to address that as an issue in order to make up that ongoing wealth gap, or the alternative to that structural analysis of systemic inequalities in this country is you could just, I don't know, say that, like, black people in America have, like, a bad culture or something, which is something that conservatives say literally all the time, so, I mean, that's what this boils down to. They do not believe that systemic inequalities, systemic injustices exist in the United States, and so what she's trying to claim there when she says that it's actually the left who are trying to establish these hierarchies of oppression, she's trying to insinuate that during this process of trying to undo or to ameliorate some of the ongoing consequences of that legacy of chattel slavery and Jim Crow and all of these other oppressive laws throughout history, trying to undo the reverberating effects of that discrimination, that's the actual discrimination according to her and according to people who are pushing this anti-woke campaign, okay? That's what this is at the end of the day, right? And on top of that, it's also kind of funny because at the beginning of that clip, she's talking about how, you know, nobody really identifies as, as woke now, only some like fringes and the vast majority of the American people see wokeness as this like, you know, pervasive threat to the country and it's unraveling society in this myriad of different ways, right? But if you actually look at some of the recent polling data, and this really surprised me, honestly, with how much conservatives and just the general consensus seems to be anti-woke within the United States with how much attention that it gets all the time in this country. But here from Yahoo News and, and from The Hill directly, the organization that she was literally just speaking on, they say most in new poll view woke as a positive term. Now, listen, I'm not even somebody who would like go out there and say, oh, I'm super woke or anything like that. I think it's kind of a cringe phrase anyways. I don't think that many leftists go out and, you know, are identifying themselves as woke all the time, whatever that means, because it's sort of, again, this vague amorphous term, you know, the history of it is basically centered around, again, being aware, being awake of systemic injustices in this country. So it's not a label that I would be like offended by if somebody called me woke or something like that. But it appears like the overwhelming majority of the American people not only don't see this as this like inherent massive threat to the country, but actually still think of it as somewhat of a positive term. So they say a majority of Americans in a new poll have a positive association with the term woke, understanding it to mean to be informed, educated on, and aware of social injustices. Okay, now again, this is not a straw man position of what the term woke means, right? You could say like, oh, well, this polling data is skewed because they're giving them this definition that seems like it's pretty basic and, and you know, understandable to most people, but this is basically the exact same standard, the exact same definition that Ron DeSantis's own attorneys were giving in that legal filing that we just looked over. I mean, it's the exact same line. So when you lay it out to people, what this word actually means in practice, right? Well, they seem to not have, you know, much of a, a problem with it. They don't seem to be very bothered by the use of this term. Now, again, number of different ways you could define it. Maybe if you defined in this poll as saying like, you know, as I point out down here to be overly politically correct and to police other people's words. Yeah, I'm generally not in favor of that type of wokeness, but if you have a problem with that, if you have a problem with people being overly politically correct or, uh, you know, trying to tone police other people or police other people's words, then talk about that. Don't just label it as woke and move on as if everybody understands and has the exact same definition of this word, which they clearly don't, okay? So, you know, beyond that, beyond just the ridiculous nature of this and just sort of, again, exposing how hollow this anti-woke ideological movement on the right is, it's also just hilarious, again, with the polling data that, like, even with all of this attention, 
all of this weight that they have put behind bashing wokeness. I mean, you hear Trump talk about it. DeSantis, all of the top political pundits and politicians are constantly bashing against, you know, woke ideologies and all of that. And all of this hysteria they have gen they've managed to generate in this country and still a vast majority of the country, it appears like, don't really either care about this term or if they do, they see it in a positive light. So that part of this is absolutely hilarious. Now, another thing that this reminded me of was uh, this famous clip that I covered on this channel where Matt Walsh, one of the, you know, foremost anti-trans commentators on the internet right now, working for the Daily Wire, this guy made a movie, okay, a movie that was called, you know, what is a woman? He's going around, he's pretending as if, you know, uh, you know, trans people existing as some inherent threat to society and nobody seems to be able to define a uh, woman in a way that is, uh, you know, acceptable under his guidelines or his terms and all of that. So this is a guy who prides himself on being an expert when it comes to LGBTQ issues or anti-LGBTQ framing and research and studying and all of that stuff. And this is what happened when he went on Joe Rogan. He just completely blew out of the water the estimates that he was trying to put forward in terms of how many kids in this country have undergone have undergone hormone therapy. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves of this amazing clip. Again, just revealing the fact that some of these people, even ones that write books on this topic of wokeness or ones like Matt Walsh that do entire fucking movies about this, you know, woke ideology and the gender movement and all of that stuff, that it seems like they don't even know what the fuck they're actually talking about, which is just absolutely amazing. So let's just watch this real quick. How many people have had this done? Depends on what. I don't think we have exact numbers, but it's if we're talking about the drugs, it's, I mean, millions. Um, are you talking uh, about hum hormone blockers? Yeah. Uh, millions of kids have been on hormone blockers? Really? Uh I'm sure someone's going to fact check me on it, but my 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 guess is that we're in we're into the millions now at this point. Yeah, that would be my guess. Okay, so that's his guess there, right? I mean, now you could give him a little bit of credit for not saying, "Oh, I know this to be 100% fact." He even said somebody was going to fact check me in a second. Let's go ahead and watch that fact check. Remember, he claimed millions. Okay, that was his estimate off the top of his head, given all of this, you know, stringent research that he has done into this topic. He estimated millions of kids had taken hormone therapy, and this is the fact check that we got right here. I actually think that uh, that that this shouldn't this shouldn't be happening to. That's a very small number, if that's right. It I'll says over the last five years, there were at least 4,780 adolescents who started puberty blockers and had a prior gender dysphoria diagnosis. Okay, so estimates millions, at least, that's what you know the number is in his head, millions of kids, and you have an actual number over a five-year time span of 4,800, roughly, give or take, okay? 4,800 versus millions. And this, again, it's not just to roast Matt Walsh for being, you know, uh, inaccurate in the specifics of this one piece of data. It's just to show, again, number one, they don't even really know what the fuck they're talking about when it comes to the statistics on this, when it comes to the actual data on this. But then on top of that as well, I mean, this is part of the overarching narrative that they are trying to construct and completely exaggerating the amount of, like, LGBTQ young people there are in this country how many young trans people there are in this country. I mean, you can look at the data, even among Gen Z and millennials, like, yeah, there's been a slight uptick. That's probably just because we've had a slightly more accepting country for LGBTQ people to exist in. That could be a causal explanatory factor within this equation. But you look at the numbers on it and it's like, okay, we've had an uptick, but it's not like a dramatic uptick. I mean, it's not as if like, you know, 50% of Gen Z kids are identifying as trans or something like that. It's still a tiny, tiny fraction Okay, it's like 2%, 1% or something like that, even within some of the younger generations that are identifying as trans. Okay, so they try to make it as if it's like, oh my God, you have these, these groomer teachers and all of these, you know, drag shows and stuff that are propagandizing kids into thinking that they are trans. And this is happening all across the country. It's millions and millions of kids. And if we don't stop them right now, then in just a matter of a couple years, every kid will be trans. Every kid will be gay or lesbian or bisexual or something like that. And it's just not true. Not that it would be a problem anyways if there was an uptick to some degree of people who identify as LGBTQ and younger generations but you know they're just completely blowing it out of the water because they want to push this hysteria and basically use this issue as a distraction so that they don't have to talk about you know their underlying economic policy issues their their underlying foreign policy issues which are equally as insane as their cultural opinions at the same time now another thing that I would say in addition to that is uh, you know we've seen other stories that I've covered on this channel 
for example, the Utah bill that was uh, supposed to be banning uh, uh, transgender young girls from participating in sports, essentially, okay? And the claim is that, oh, it's unfair, it's creating this massive barrier for uh, young girls to get, young cis girls to get into a uh, college and to do well in sporting events and all that. So they pass under this narrative, this whole bill to ban these kids from participating in high school sports, all right? And then the bill gets vetoed by the governor within Utah because he was basically coming out and making the argument, hey guys, you understand that this bill you're crafting right now would literally only ban one person from participating in female high school sports. They passed a bill to block one person in the entire state who was playing high school sports and who even knows if they were even good at the sport that they were playing. They were probably just trying to go and do something fun, an activity, a social activity with their friends. They, that's how demented this entire movement is. Not only can they not really define it, okay, and when they do define it, they're defining it in a way where it's like, yes, of course, the vast majority of the American people believe there are systemic injustices that still need to be rectified in this country. So they're wrong when they do define it or they can't define it. And then once they do try to define it and implement it into law, they're passing these incredibly draconian bills and putting forward bills all across the country. I mean, we've seen this here from the ACLU, hundreds of anti-LGBTQ bills all across the country. So they can't define it. When they do define it, they're wrong about what, you know, is the reality of what is actually going on in this country and what has been going on in this country for its entire history. And then once they pass pieces of legislation, it's this draconian, insanely dystopian, you know, piece of legislation in order to try to crack down on a group that is literally just trying to live their lives in peace. Everyone is saying good politic guy has the best politic. Believe me, no one does it like him. Believe me, everyone is saying.